Well, I think we can go ahead and start. Let me have a word of prayer to start us. And um, Dear Lord, we thank you that we can gather here today and pray that we will have some good learning about the work that you're doing, your mission work in Taiwan and throughout Asia. And Lord, thank you that we could be a part of that. And let us be your servants to joyfully be a part of that. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, let me start by saying how I want to present. I hope everyone can see clearly. Um, I want to present about China Lutheran Seminary, which is where I work. I'm a teacher there and been there 15 years. And then I say, and beyond, because um, we don't just focus only on our seminary, but we work beyond that in Asia. We're like a base to go out throughout Asia. And um, my family. Stephen Oliver is my name, and then Maggie is my wife, Isaac, Gary, and Ginny, our children. And we live in Shinju, which is right on the red dot. So Taiwan, and Taipei is up here in the north, and then drive an hour south, and you'll be in Shinju. Um, Shinju, the, the name of the city, means new bamboo. Shin is new. Jew is bamboo, and that's where it is right there, and that's a picture of our seminary. Um, Shinju is Taiwan's Silicon Valley, so that's where they produce a lot of the, you know, cell phones, iPads, computers, and do a lot of high-tech research as well as production. So that's a major part of Taiwan's economy now. It's really plugged right in with um, California's Silicon Valley, San Jose, and the whole Bay Area. Now, if you go and look at Shinju, the high-tech area, it'll look very neatly organized and like a lot of places in America. But most of Taiwan is not like that. It just haphazardly kind of grow up, and um, there's a lot of little alleys and things protrude. And, um, but they wanted to build that Silicon Valley just you know, like America or Europe and plan it out. So that's what our area looks like. And if I'm calculating right, if I'm estimating right, I think our seminary is right here, right on the edge of the whole, you know, technology area. Um, and I see Taiwan is a stable base for spreading the word in Asia. So I say that because a lot of the governments there are still very unpredictable. You know, with China being communist government, and a lot of tensions in the society now. Um, we don't know what's going to happen there. Um, Myanmar is a military um, dictatorship, and you know Vietnam and Laos are still communist governments, and there's a lot of tension happening in these societies where basically the communist government is like a one-party dictatorship government. And a lot of people, as they're being educated and traveling, they don't want to have that much control in their life. So. Um, so we never know what's going to happen to the missionaries. They get kicked out of China, and then they come back in, and they, you know, a lot of things happen. But in Taiwan, um, they're a democratic, pretty stable government. They allow missionary visas. I have a missionary visa there, and um, they welcome us. And so that's a good place to have a base and then go out throughout Asia. I've been to all these places to, from Taiwan right there. So Philippines, China, a variety of places, India, um, Burma, Myanmar, Cambodia, Indonesia. And so we kind of use this as a base to go out, launch out into these other countries that are very restrictive or have many enemies of the gospel. Um, China Lutheran Seminary is the only fully Mandarin-speaking Lutheran seminary in the world. And Mandarin is now the world's largest language group. So Mandarin Chinese is a major language group. Almost all Chinese can understand it, even though there are different Chinese dialects, like Cantonese and Hakka, Taiwanese. But Mandarin has become the main language. And that's because it was the language of Beijing. It was the dialect of Beijing. 
And for the last thousand years or so, Beijing has been the capital of China. So they've wanted to enforce their dialect on the whole of China. And that goes also for Singapore and, and um, Taiwan, and now increasingly in Hong Kong, it's, they're increasingly speaking Mandarin. So um, we should be interested in that language because it's the mother language of the largest group of people in the world. And you know, English is the largest second language. And Spanish is the largest language speak, mother language speaking over the largest geographical area. So that's kind of interesting. Those three languages are the top language of this century, Mandarin, English, and Spanish. And um, so after centuries of resisting the gospel, I had mentioned this in the sermon, Chinese Christians have increased a hundred times in the last 40 years. I, a math teacher told me that was incorrect because if it's 100%, then it would only increase to 2 million. Increase it. But she said it should be 100 times, so I'll have to change that. But um, the Chinese Christians have increased 100 times in the last 40 years from 1 million to 100 million but less than 10% of Chinese are still Christian. So it's neat to be part of this movement of the Holy Spirit. It's a really lively movement. And but at the same time, there's still a lot of Chinese that are really in the darkness in idol worship, ancestor worship, and other religions. I have about 50 Taiwan relatives um, through my wife. And until recently, she was the only Christian among them. Now there's a few that are starting to believe, but we're still reaching out to her parents, and, um, and we, we pray that more will believe. Um, China Lutheran Seminary, our goal is to form servants of the cross for the Chinese churches. And we have about 100 full-time, te 10 full-time teachers now, 75 on-campus students, and 200 off-campus students. Most of the off-campus students are not going to be full-time church workers. They're lay people who are interested in growing in the Word, in the Bible, and in serving in their churches and their workplaces. So you can see our seminary, most of the students um, are, are lay people, not going on to be pastors or missionaries. And that's different from the seminaries here. And um, we have a budget of about 100 million U.S. dollars about a hundred million per year. That's what our yearly budget is. Um, here's a picture of our faculty meeting. And of the teachers, about a third are missionaries. Um, Yuka Kariainen from Finland, or from the Finnish mission. And then Emmanuel Scharr is from the German Marburg mission. And then myself, I'm taking the picture. And um, then the rest are Chinese or Taiwan teachers. This is me teaching Galatians. And um, here's another angle on the class. And then the whole class. And um, you can see probably two-thirds of our students are women. And I don't know of one now that says they want to be an ordained pastor, but they will be a lot of different kinds of um, callings in the church. And actually two thirds, they say in the whole world, in the Christian church, it's basically two thirds women. And two thirds or more of the work is done by women. <laughs> so of the actual work, I mean the actual work that you have to do to do the church's work. <laughs> so I think our seminary is kind of represents that, that um, category. But, Another way our seminary is different from here is that our callings that our students will go on to are many different callings, not just pastor. In fact, very few will actually become pastors. And many will become evangelists or um, like what we have here is DCE, youth worker or outreach worker, church administrator, and many other callings. Teacher, missionary, many callings. And so the people in our seminary from many different backgrounds and many different um, go on to serve in many different ways. But they're all studying in Mandarin. So that's the main thing that unites them, whether they're Chinese or not. And here's our chapel. This is where we have chapel during the week, or 
chapel service. We have our chapel service in the mornings when we're having classes. Um, this is our cafeteria. You can see my wife there, Maggie, Ginny, um, Gary, and Isaac, and then students in the background. Sometimes our family eats at the cafeteria. And these are three of my students who I'm pretty thankful for um, the fruit that they've borne in the ministries they've gone on to. And um, this one is a pastor of a, of a large church in our area, which is kind of a very strongly, uh, in America we have a lot of strong church movements uh, like Calvary Chapel and really a lot of more charismatic Pentecostal new churches, our community churches that grow up in our very big churches. And they don't have a lot of the traditional background so they can, they have a lot of freedom to do a lot of things are what they feel they need to do at the time. So that church is like that. It's kind of a Pentecostal or charismatic type church, big church. But 60% of our students are non-Lutheran. But then they go out and they bring what they feel is a really valuable Lutheran teachings to their churches. And so um, he, he has done that to his church and really brought that church to, to have a strong value for God's word, which is one of our strong values. And, um, and then this man is from Myanmar, which I just m mentioned is one of the countries that has really restricted the gospel and um, has been led by a military dictatorship for years. And um, it's also called Burma, the older name, so Myanmar or Burma. And he is a Chinese man from there. And now he's, he came to Taiwan to study and has become our dean of students. So he was one of, also one of my students and um, is one of our professors now. And this also, this man also was my student, a Taiwan man who um, was very strong in the evangelical movement and, um, and then really came to have very strong Lutheran convictions and studying in our seminary and now has become our academic dean and a professor. So these three men, all who are my students, um, about 10 years ago, now they've come on, come, come on to do all these other really important works of being a pastor, teacher, administrator in our seminary. I always tell the students, you will do greater things than me. And I believe that. And I can see that now. That's what Jesus told us. We will do greater things than he did. So that's an amazing, humble word of Jesus to say that. This man is one of our present students and his wife. He's a pastor in Indonesia in Jakarta. And um, this is the new kinds of students we're getting are more students from around the world, including America. And they all have a heart for bringing the word to Chinese in Mandarin. So regardless of what country they come from. And this man, his family, he and his wife's family, although they're Chinese, they've lived in Indonesia a few generations and they've forgotten how to speak Chinese. So they just speak Indonesian. But in his big church in Jakarta, they have more and more Chinese coming. And they have asked him to be the pastor for the Chinese. So they sent him to our seminary in Taiwan to study theology in, in Mandarin so he could learn Mandarin better and strengthen his theology and then be pastor of the Chinese in Indonesia. And this man is a, was a retired policeman who is one of the aboriginals of Taiwan, a native Taiwan, which is different. We usually think of Taiwan being Chinese, but they also had their Polynesian-like um, native Taiwan people, just as we have Native Americans here. And um, often in Taiwan, they were persecuted and shoved up into the unwanted places. But um, he is now, has just recently graduated and is starting a church of Aboriginal Taiwan people right in Shinju, is pastoring that church. And we have recently a student from Vietnam who's a Vietnamese, but he's learning Mandarin to be a missionary to Chinese. And then we have about five Koreans that um, pastors and their wives who are secret missionaries in China. But they've come to our seminary to study and build up their their Chinese Mandarin as well as um, their theology. So we have, we're getting more and more students that are non-Chinese, but they're wanting to reach out to Chinese. 
with Mandarin. Um, this is a page of a, something that I've done because my work is not only teaching and preaching, but doing literature work. Um, for example, we have put Martin Luther's Romans commentary into Chinese. And now when we write it down, all Chinese can read it, regardless of the dialect they speak. Because the, it's the same letters in written Chinese for all Chinese languages. They can, all Chinese can read it, whether they're in Hong Kong and speak Cantonese, or in Taiwan speak Taiwanese or whatever. So once we write it down, it's, it's available to all Chinese. And um, this is Luther's Romans commentary, and we went back and revised it, and I helped do some of that revising work, and then we're reprinting it this summer, and they asked me to write an introduction. So this is my introduction. And I went to ask a few Chinese teachers to help me correct my Chinese, and you can see almost every line has corrections. Sometimes they're just simple ways of phrasing it to make it more smooth in the language, you know. And so um, that's part of my work. Um, I found this recently. We are translating Luther's Galatians commentary, which is really an impact, a commentary that has had a lot of impact on Christianity in the last 500 years. Um, his Galatians commentary. And... Um, it's just about finished. The original translator has finished translating it, but now two of us editors are still going through it. And when I was going through it recently, I came across this quote from Martin Luther. A lot of people felt that he was not too strong on mission work. But here's what he said about in Galatians 4, verse 6. There's nothing I want more than to make his gospel known to the world and to convert many people. So even back then... Uh, Martin Luther had this vision, you know, that the gospel should be made known to the world and many people converted. So I thought that was a pretty neat quote from him. 